this evening is really just an overview and maybe some of some kind of very broad observations, some important points, some questions, kind of maybe one very serious question um, uh, about really what her heritage or, or towns mean to us and mean to us in, into the future, which hopefully we can tease out in more detail tomorrow. Um, but just very simply, and I'll come, I'll come back to it, and, and I may not pick up on all of these in, in the next few slides, um, and I may indeed include a few, a few other ones, but just, I suppose this concept, and I'll, I'll come, this uh, the idea of, of the holistic, you know, that, that we think of heritage as one thing, and shopping is another, and, you know, education is another, and, but within the context of a town in Ireland, which is essentially all our towns are historic towns, I suppose heritage and heritage in the town, and I'm particularly looking at the kind of physical, the the, the urban and, and the architecture and the building realm. It's a, a very much a holistic view, and, and uh, I'll, I'll come back to that. I suppose that, in really, in one sense, part of the, in terms of starting to use it intelligently, you really want to understand what it is that's distinctive and you need to celebrate and support that. But understanding that is, a, is not something that happens overnight. Pat, you told me when you grew up in Wexford that you, you know, when you learned that there were walled towns, you didn't know was I inside or outside. And it's a funny thing because once you begin to be able to read something like that, your whole spatial experience changes. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of a really wonderful thing. And I think it's part of what this culturally curious visitor taps into is because their ability to read places is getting more and more sophisticated. Having said that, I'm particularly interested in the idea of Carrick and Shore, the place where you live. It's your home, it's the most important place in the world. Um, and so the spatial experience of the town is important, the collective and the cluster effect, and that could be uh, uh, trying to look at an area, an area based, or it could be a collection of areas, or indeed I think and it's again a particular thing of pretty much all the urban situation all across Ireland because it's even in, in, in Dublin is this wonderful relationship between being in the middle of a town, in the middle of a city and the landscape beyond. And uh, you're in the middle of Belfast and you're this, surrounded by these wonderful hills in, in, in Dublin. You're on the South Keys and you look up and you're up or you're on Marion Square and Swinton <laughs> Street and you see the Dublin Mountains and one of the most absolutely, certainly in my mental map of Carrick and Shore is arriving in and the hill, and it is a hill, and those wonderful trees with their tall trunks on, on the brow of the hill and that is absolutely special. I'd go to the barricades for, for that. Um, the dynamic. Towns are not static. Because it's a historic town, its living dynamic condition is incredibly important uh, as part of the lifeblood. So again, it's this layering and keeping fresh. Don't underestimate the impact of the small and the simple. So again, we've had that earlier, you know, if we can have, I suppose, quick wings, but small, small initiatives, simple things. Keep in use, I'll come to that. That's probably the most important thing, <laughs> certainly when you deal with our buildings. Once they go out of use, you're, you're on a kind of a decline and it gets harder and harder and harder, so keeping them in use, and that raises the big, big question, I think, and the minister, in a sense, touched on it, and her job is the whole thing of our towns, I suppose, fundamentally and foremost, were places where people lived. They came together to live, to do trade, commerce, and defence, all of those reasons, but substantially, the substantial amount of activity happening in towns was living. And it's a really big question, and I'd love to tease it out tomorrow. You know, uh, it struck me there's still a good sense of living in in Carrick, in, in in and certainly up near the castle. There's a kind of a, a very nice, strong, settled residential cluster that kind of raises questions in terms of increased activity to the castle. So we have to have to recognise that, recognise the value of the offbeat. You know, the quirky, really important, and and do have a plan. So just. The holistic. This is Clonus in Monaghan. Wonderful town, the Drumlin countryside. Again, you know that sense you're up on the top and the diamond and the view across. But that is, and the life that goes on in it, as well as the physicality, the graveyard, the, 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 the roofs, in, 
the new, the mundane, the ordinary, and the special, and the distinctive, the profile, the topography, the history, and the future. That's what is, is, is our, our urban heritage. And, you know, so this, is, this is a series of plans of a whole range of, uh, of towns, villages in Ireland, um, different scales, different sizes, all over the place. Don't try and understand, but just look at the distinctiveness the, the, the variety of pattern and uh, this just shows it as a, as a plan and that's a, that's a wonderful collective heritage to have and, and here are more slightly bigger Armagh city but Cookstown, any of you who know Cookstown, I mean, this is a remarkably long, 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 long street that goes up and down and up and down and uh, really, really uh, a, a, a wonderful whereas here Baileyborough, Market Town, Plan Town with a lovely little uh, expansion at the middle very, very small to make a space, and the church on axis. All very, very distinctive. And again, again, sorry, this is a very pixelated uh, map borrowed from OSI, but um, Carrick and Shore, again, also has its own distinctive plan, the Carrick Beg and the river, the Main Street, Westgate, and this lovely, lovely bend. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. I see this, you know, following the bend in the river, castle at one end, the friary here, the development in, in, in between. Um, absolutely stunning. Talking about distinctiveness, Passage West in Cork, this is a place called Penny Dock. And Penny Dock is a watery <coughs> square. It's lovely. And it's a small town outside Cork, very long, long town, hugging to uh, a steeply rising uh, uh, hillside down to the sea, tidal, you know, somebody might see that as untidy, but that's a whole sense of, of I suppose, activity, economy, but also a, a very particular amenity. And it's peppered then by these traces, the pier and the, and the signage, you know, these traces. And again, going back, that's what we read, we, we, we understand and we pick up on those. So these little traces, and it could be a curb stone, it could be the edge of a pavement. Uh, we all know the, about the pump and the, and the telephone box. But the, sometimes they're more subtle than that, and uh, they make up the very particularity of, of, of a place. Just want to touch on this principle, and it's really, really important. This con con concept, um, which this chap Gordon Cullen in the 70s brought out a book called Townscape, and he described this concept of serial vision, and it's really about the spatial experience. So, any of you who've been to an Italian hilltop town, or you think of you know, and we have our own versions here, which I'll show you. But we ooh and ah about this lovely rolling sense of the up of the town. What he was very interesting. He said that a small little deflection uh, in plan, that when you translate that up into the built form, into the three dimensions, can have a remarkable effect in terms of your experience as 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 as, it, as you move through it. Uh, and Carrick and Shore is full of that. Well, here's our little Italian hilltop town in Ishtig in Kilkenny, um, and I'm going to take you from kind of the top, not quite the top, but just looking at how, you know, you've got this uh, kind of little consistency of boundary walls and gardens, uh, the houses, but you've got a gable here, the facade, and a facade here. You're drawn, the eye is drawn curiously down, and then this lovely prospect out to the, to the landscape beyond, um, around, and then this very large, impressive house, but all the time, aren't you curious to, to, to keep going down and down, and then we come down into a slightly more, I suppose, commercial centre, you get that sense of activity down by the river, and then ended by a very simple square, and of course the trees here are very, very important in all of that experience. And if I reversed back, you get this bend in the, wor in, in, in the road, and uh, Ian mentioned earlier, painting, you know, the pink, the sun on that facade is carrying you on back up again. So that is a very real spatial experience that we all enjoy. And uh, I could do, and would love to bring some of you along Carrick and Shore Main Street and back by the river, and we'd have the same uh, ex experience or across the edge. This is Chapel Lizard. And here, just really the point I'm making in terms of that sense of spatial enclosure, the mature trees here are incredibly important in that relationship. So again, the town, in terms of its heritage and its quality, 
is not just about the buildings in isolation. It has to see, you have to see the whole, the whole picture together. And the lanes, again, and I suppose there's a sense of connection. They perform a very vital role in terms of shortcuts. We've tended to dismiss them and turn them into back ends and we put our bins there and they become unpleasant places to use or they become uh, full of litter and, and, and rubbish. <laughs> but we really have to start to kind of see them as uh, really permeating the, the town, extending its surface area um, and opportunities, as I say, for, for shortcuts and sometimes just mystery. I mean, this is wonderful. I think this is up in uh, Glenties and uh, the blue, whoever chose that colour, but it's a real draw up, uh, draw for the eye. And again, whoops, just this concept, I suppose, of seeing our town as a place that has, you know, we've, we've used the word stories, but in a way it's like, it is stories, and those stories manifest themselves in the building, in the built form. And the built form, very often, I mean, you talk about Kilkenny, and you, um, ostensibly, a facade looks like it's a 19th century building, but inside it could have medieval fabric. So you have this really interesting uh, uh, palimpsest of, of, of layers and time. And that's a very, I suppose, important aspect in somehow managing the sense of being able to change, but also recognizing that continuity. I won't give you it here, but I might tomorrow. Um, uh, again, Ian mentioned the, the EU's kind of evolving understanding of conservation and it being a very social, uh, a socially understood thing now, and uh, where we've moved away from kind of protecting monuments and their settings. The UNESCO have brought out uh, recommendations on what they call historic urban landscapes. And they have this <laughs> definition, which is really full of all these ologies, but it's, 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 it's wonderfully broad and encompassing, and it includes the tangible and the intangible and the spiritual, and, and, and it really includes one very interesting thing, which is, which is the meaning places have for people is part of the urban landscape. And just in terms of kind of this concept of keeping fresh and alive, this is this is a former power station, a uh, small little power station, tiny little power station, pumping station, sorry, in Wapping, in London. Uh, very, very simple. Uh, I suppose the benefit here was it, it had never fallen into too bad re uh, repair. But all they did was they put in a new floor and they have it decked out as a swish uh, restaurant. But in a sense that imaginative use of in some people's minds, ordinary buildings, but they're very extraordinary and unique inside. So sometimes it will be very, very simply executed, but a good idea. And I mean, this is a rather radical uh, 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 introduction, but in a sense, it really does matter to the heritage of our towns to keep the lifeblood new. So that the, the contemporary and our consideration for it is, is very important. It's not easy to do it. The challenges are, are, are immense. And the small initiative, I'm looking at, at Liam and my time. Minutes. Seven minutes, okay. This is the entrance to Castletown Gates in Selbridge. I don't know if any of you know Selbridge, but um, Castletown, probably one of the most important 18th century uh, houses in, in, in the country. This marvelous avenue, which leads off uh, in access from this uh, very small, really, in a sense, estate town. The gates are set back, and there's a lovely pair of buildings either side, and the, and the road now kind of takes a, a, a strong swerve around up, up to the left, as it were, and it's a busy road. But the point I'm going to make, this faces southwest. There's a bench, a very simple bench. It's away from the wall. It's not affecting it. It's set back, and it's probably one of the most pleasant and interesting places to sit. So choosing the location of a seat, it's sheltered. You see the man there with, let's say, his grandchild. It's far enough back, but you have full view of everything going on in the street. So, you know, maybe that happened by accident, and I'm post-rationalizing it. Um, 
But having said that, I suppose it's really important. We tend to think about benches and seats where we put them in front of the castle, but instead that might be the worst place in the world to put them. So uh, a lot of thought. Night and day as well is incredibly important. I mean, and I actually think the Irish town at night, uh, I, I, I made a point to hang out a little longer as, as, as it got darker outside uh, to see, but there's a really lovely atmosphere now that would be killed if the lights on the upper floors are dead. So I suppose it's just again to think about it, Turin, I'm not suggesting this as an idea, but it's just a remarkable phenomenon. Turin is a, is a very different experience. You go through these wonderful 19th century arcades by day and you barely notice this whole kind of grid work of neon, but at night it just lights up and it's a whole, it's a, it's a, it's a wonderful experience. So you can be very careful about your architectural heritage in the night time and then you're into a, a really playful, colourful, dr dramatic experience at night. Um, and the really important question, and I, and I think we can't avoid it because I have to say, and it is, maybe it is, maybe we are talking about the future of our towns as really purely a place for tourists to come or hang out where we, where we you know, uh, celebrate and we shop. But I, it's a question really for everyone here. Is the future of our towns also a place is it, as our home? And are we losing, I suppose, the credibility that we could live a full life in, in a town um, uh, and, 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 a, and a meaningful and a very, a very good quality life? Some of the town, our houses in our towns are very small. So maybe we have to start to think about you know, amalgamation and trying to make two into one and making a long back, back garden. And I think there are ways in which we have to start to do that. Now, I, I'm not getting into the cost of that because obviously you have, to, you have to pay for two houses instead of one, but just purely in planning terms, um, in terms of kind of creating the kinds of um, I suppose spatial expectations, uh, amenities that people would expect, um, then we have to, we, we, we really seriously have to, have to think about that. Um, but as I say, the very important point really is, is, is to keep, keep the buildings in use. Uh, once they go out of use, they're in decline. The offbeat, and I must be one of the culturally curious brigade because I came across this in Germany, very interesting, uh, Huguenot House, um, uh, uh, an American artist who is actually a, a former planner um, and it's, it's kind of a, it's, this was a project with a message, but he had, and he had done something similar in Chicago where he, where he lives, but he took this house, he brought over some formerly unemployed construction workers who he had trained, he trained up unemployed construction workers in, in this town, they kind of, they took materials from a redundant or an obsolete house about to be taken down in one part of the town and used it and carved into this space um, a whole other experience. And he had great fun, he made swings and all kinds of uh, interventions and uh, it was there for a while, but he was asked about the aesthetics that he uses um, and what kind of taste. And he just kind of said is that um, my knowledge of materials and my access to skilled people plus time create what you call taste. I believe that things in our lives should be cared for and they should be used at their highest level of use. So part of it you saw was my willingness to care for things <laughs> and invest in the care of them. And I thought that was a, a, a wonderfully a simple and touching statement. So use, the temporary use, uh, the kind of vernacular or spontaneous use is all part of the lifeblood. And really, in terms of the town, like this person has said, the defining characteristics of urban public space are proximity, we're close to each other, diversity, we're all probably very different in this room, and accessibility, we have access to things. This, I'll come back to that tomorrow, it was very interesting, this uh, urban designer, 10 principles for good urban design, but he, his final one, which is lovely, which is, with all the means available, promote intricacy, joy, and visual delight in the built environment. And good old Desmond Morris, author of The Human Zoo, <coughs> said the human animal requires a spatial territory in which to live that possesses unique features, surprises, visual oddities, landmarks, 
and architectural idiosyncrasies and in a sense walk out the door and that's what you have. Carrick and Shore, just very simply, my little mental map of it is, um, I think Carrick Bay is really, really distinctive. This is marvellous main street with the bend as I've described, Westgate, the Friary, the two churches which are more hidden, I know somebody's giving out about the churches, kind of more discreet. These wonderful, these kind of three uh, banks along the river, and as I described earlier, the trees, as I say, they always remind me of Macbeth um, as I arrive into Carrick and Shore and they never move. So that's, that's it. That's what we'll talk about tomorrow. Thank you.